The city of Grand Terrace is known as the Blue Mountain City, and the City Council of Grand Terrace is working to provide residents and visitors with year-round access to the Blue Mountain by establishing a Blue Mountain Nature Trail. In 2018, the City of Grand Terrace was awarded a $212,000 grant from the State of California Habitat Conservation Fund for construction of the Blue Mountain Nature Trailhead. The following year, the city received a $1,300,000 earmark in the state budget, proffered by Assemblymember Eloise Gomez Reyes for the acquisition of land and development of a Blue Mountain Trail. The following presentation is an update on the city's progress on the establishment of the Blue Mountain Trail and Trailhead. Good morning, here to uh, update everybody with the um, progress of uh, Blue Mountain Trail and Grand Terrace. It's May 5th, 2021. Uh, just a quick introduction of the project team. Uh, Mr. Duffy is the city manager. We have uh, Stephen Weiss, uh, project manager for the city and the planning and development service director. Uh, my name is Chuck Foley. I'm with Hirsch and Associates and a registered landscape architect and we'll be heading up the design of the project. Pam Brown is also um, with uh, Hearst and Associates, and she's a registered landscape architect as well. Brief project description of, of um, where we are in the process and what the project is really all about. Um, we're proposing to meet a need through a multi-benefit project with four goals. Um, we want to build a trailhead in order to provide legal and safe access to the existing Blue Mountain Trail. Two, we want to build a trail link that will connect the new trailhead to the existing Blue Mountain Trail. Three, we want to open up this area as a nature center and eventual uh, wilderness park. The residents and visitors of the region will uh, be able to enjoy that. And four, install stormwater capture elements. Um, this would en en enable uh, groundwater infiltration and recharge of the groundwater system. The, the legal access to Blue Mountain Trail has negatively impacted the city of Grand Terrace and its neighborhoods. The city, along with the Friends of Blue Mountain, have implemented a grassroots effort to make the area accessible and designate 500 acres as a wilderness park with a vision of creating an education curriculum in compliance with state standards to educate students about the local ecosystem, its role in the local, regional, and global natural world, and how to be responsible stewards of the Blue Mountain Natural Resources. Our process. So the process starts with the city identifying the project. Um, the city has submitted uh, for state grant funding and received that, that's done. The city prepares a request for proposal and solicits design firms to prepare proposals for design and engineering. That's Hirsch and Associates, that's where we came on board. Uh, we were awarded the project and we began the conceptual design and that's in process. Our first community meeting was uh, April 11th in 2019 and where we are today is uh, we want to evaluate the findings from our conceptual design and from the initial community input. So the project site location uh, is at the corner of Van Buren Street and Observation Drive. There is a piece of property um, at the bottom of the slope uh, below the reservoir tanks that the city owns, and that is the area of focus. In this uh, image, you can see the existing trail heading up along the crest of the top of Blue Mountain. Um, and, uh, and so uh, we want to be able to connect to that trail uh, from city property. Another image where the trailhead and parking area would be proposed at the bottom of the hillside on Observation Drive at Van Buren. And it's again, just below the existing um, reservoir tanks and access drive. And there's a couple of uh, locations at the top that are potential uh, link up locations. Existing conditions between the, the proposed trailhead and the existing trail you know, it's an uh, unimproved slope, um, it's mountainous, it's steep. Um, there's uh, some real interesting uh, boulder outcroppings. We've got um, some drainage facilities that, is, that are uh, capturing uh, stormwater that's coming off the, 
off the hillside and, and protecting the neighborhood below. The area along the proposed trailhead, um, we've got a sidewalk along the street there in observation. It's open grassy, um, kind of meadow type area. Again, drainage infrastructure. Some more images up on the hillside. We actually um, hiked this hillside from the proposed trailhead up to the um, existing trail. And these are some of the photos we took along that hike. It's, it's, um, it's certainly, it's doable, it's passable, but it is quite steep. And then views from up above, if you've ever been um, on the walk, uh, these would be familiar to you. So we've, we've had the opportunity to attend the walk for a couple of years now. Um, the, the last one was on March 5th, and we were all very happy and fortunate to be able to, to walk up the hill. And um, of course, we had our masks on, but um, it gave us the opportunity to experience the walk, and that's an a annual, once a year hike up the, up the hill. Um, providing this trail would allow that hike to happen daily. So our priorities, we have a set of priorities when we look at the design of this project. And um, one of the most important priorities is hearing input from stakeholders. And we wanna be able to identify site opportunities and constraints. Um, while we do that, we have design considerations to, to look at and we have to evaluate pathway with construction budget materials. So we're balancing um, the built environment to construction budget. Um, it's important that what we design and what is constructed is sustainable so that um, it's easy to maintain or minimizes maintenance in the future. Uh, we want to provide the public a functioning trail and support facilities that don't detract from the quality of the community. So uh, in a nutshell, what that really means is what we design needs to, to be suitable for the site um, and not something that uh, becomes a nuisance. And ultimately, we want to protect the integrity of the existing environment. So we don't want to come in and, and create uh, maintenance hazards or things that, that detract from the existing beauty that's out there. So part of our, part of our work, uh, we've surveyed the mountainside, and what you're looking at is a, a snapshot of that survey. Um, we designate the potential trail connections. Uh, we look, we're just adjacent to an existing avocado grove. The tanks, the reservoir tanks are visible in the access road. And of course, again, the proposed uh, trailhead on observation. Looking at what that trailhead and what that might look like, um, we have a, a new entry drive off Observation Street, and it would be a permeable parking lot. So it could be decomposed granite, it could be a permeable paver. Um, th these are the sorts of materials that we would uh, promote uh, to allow infiltration. Um, of course, we would be balancing material with budget, again, back to, to construction costs. So we're looking at that. Uh, the, the grant and the description of the project included uh, a small restroom building. And so we're, we're showing a small restroom building adjacent to ADA parking. So the parking lot would be ADA accessible, as would the building. The proposed trailhead would then cross the existing drainage channel. Uh, there would be a small bridge of sorts that would get folks across. And from there, you would start your, your hike on up. Um, the parking lot could feature uh, bollards, so something that would be uh, dark sky compliant. It would allow uh, the police department to be able to view the parking lot, but it would not um, create horizontal spill light towards residences. The parking lot would, would also be gated so that it could be locked at dusk. Uh, so the intention would be that the parking lot and the trailhead would be open from dawn to dusk. So let's talk about 
the trail itself and some guidelines that we were looking at for the design. So the idea is to create an enjoyable hiking experience. And while the trail is not ADA accessible, it is accessible to those on foot. And the idea is to, to, to try to limit the severity of the steepness of it um, to allow a, a larger um, section of folks that could actually climb the trail. It would be a, a primitive trail, and there's U.S. Forest Service guidelines to how those trails are constructed, and they're classified as primitive trails. So uh, it would not have concrete paving or asphalt paving. It would be native soil that's compacted. And when we look at that, we want to think about erosion, how water is coming down the slope, uh, trying to minimize erosion on the new trail. So in order to do that, we look at uh, keeping the trail at 10% or lower. Uh, but by nature of the, of the mountain, and if you've ever climbed it, you know that there's some steep sections of this. And so we would have, there are sections in our design that would uh, get up to 20% or 22% in that gradient. So this graphic depicts what that slope might look like. So if you were walking you know, up that trail, um, it's, it'll, it has some, some steep sections in it and, and it would be a bit of a challenge. Uh, you would not need um, equipment or ropes to climb to walk up this trail, but um, it would definitely uh, get your heart pumping. So proposed trail layout, it's option A, and we're calling that the southern route or the south route. Um, the parking lot, the city-owned property on observation um, is below the tanks, and this trail needs to get around the water tanks either to the south or to the north. Um, so this trail uh, would access the slope below the water tanks, and it would uh, take folks around the south end of the tanks and up to get up above them. Um, this trail would feature 445 foot of elevation gain and to get uh, from the trailhead to the proposed um, lower trail connection is roughly 6,500 linear feet. Uh, if we were to connect to the upper trail, there's 646 feet of elevation gain and it's roughly another 1,000 feet to 7,500 linear feet of new trail. So mentioned opportunities and constraints. Here we are. Opportunities. So the, we met with residents and heard from residents and residents were very concerned about having a trail um, adjacent to their rear yards above their rear yard. So by m moving the trail south of the water tanks, it avoids the residences uh, to, the, to, to the east and, um, or to the north rather, and, um, and keeps us the trail away from, from those rear yards. It also avoids the uh, water district's access road. We, we met with the water district and the water district has experienced some vandalism within their reservoir yard on that hillside. And there was some concern. They have an access road that, that um, allows them to drive trucks into that reservoir yard. And there was some concern on their uh, end of bringing uh, the public past their tanks or across that road. So by moving this trail to the south, we avoid that. So constraints. So moving this trail to the south, adjacent to the avocado groves, that's private property. The city did, does not own that. So um, that becomes a, a constraint to the project simply because uh, that landowner um, likely does not want a trail on that property. So it's, it's, um, it's a good concept of sorts, but it, it is not feasible. Uh, there are a large number of boulders on the southern side of that reservoir tank. So as you climb that hill and create this trail, uh, that adds cost to construction by having to move and maneuver those boulders to, to be able to get a trail through. So that, that becomes a constraint. And 
this section of hillside is also quite steep. So uh, as we look at the gradient of the trail, uh, we exceed 10%, um, certainly we exceed 20%. So uh, it becomes uh, a constraint for a good portion of the general public to walk this trail. So what are some of the other options? Option B, this is the north route or northern route. So this option takes a trail from the same parking lot trailhead location on observation. And it brings access to the north of the tanks. This gets us, um, this is all city owned property. So this is certainly within, there's nothing that the city would need to do additionally to get access. There would be no easements required. Um, the trail could be built today if that was the case. Um, this trail uh, has 445 feet of eleva elevation gain and it's a little bit shorter than the southern route so it's about 6200 linear feet to the lower connection point and if it was taken to the upper trail, the upper connection point, it's 666 feet of elevation gain and again another thousand square foot or another thousand square feet of um, length so it takes you to 71, 7200 linear feet. So um, again, certainly doable. The opportunities of this uh, route, there's few boulders that need to be moved. So uh, you, would, you wouldn't have that cost of construction. There's um, fewer slopes that exceed 10% through here. So you're, it's a little easier to hike it. And of course, as I mentioned, the trail is located on city property. The constraints, so constraints for this, of this route, as we heard from residents, they weren't real um, interested in having a trail up above their backyards. And, um, you know, this, this uh, concept takes a, a trail, uh, about 300 feet of trail along the back of those rear yards uh, to get up and around the res reservoir tanks. It also brings the trail across the water company's access road. So um, we have a, a stakeholder there that, that would need to be mitigated. And it would likely require a locking gate at the entrance to the access road so that folks wouldn't necessarily park within the neighborhood and walk along that water company access road to access the new trail. So there's certainly some constraints with this northern route as well. So where do we go from here? We look at the analysis of what we've studied and the property at Van Buren and Observation Way, while the, the, the actual land for the trailhead is certainly feasible, it's, um, you know, it's a candidate for a parking lot and a trailhead, the, the site above it to get around those tanks creates really two conditions that are not necessarily um, viable based on stakeholder input to date. So the southern route, we have a land over, landowner with private property who does not want the trail on that private property. The northern route, we have a trail that hugs the hillside above resident, residences. So um, what do we do? So as part of the study, we looked at other locations uh, within the city of Grand Terrace at Blue Mountain. and came up with a proposed option C. And <clears throat> there's this option uh, really becomes a partnership between a private, a willing private property owner in the city of Grand Terrace. And that option is at Palm Avenue and Honey Hill Drive. So um, the Blue Mountain Trail annual hike uh, kicks off at this location every year. Uh, there's gates, there's locked gates there now. Um, and those gates are open for the community to hike this trail. It would require or it could potentially require uh, the extension of Honey Hill Drive onto this site. Certainly there's a uh, buildable space within this lower uh, portion of this property for a trailhead and an access road. Um, it would utilize the existing trail system that's, that's here now. And the, the, the options, the uh, option C trailhead becomes quite viable in a sense because um, the new trail 
and parking would have direct access to the existing trail. That existing trail is also an access point for maintenance of the cell towers, the operators of the cell towers at the top of Blue Mountain. And those companies maintain that trail. So it provides um, an opportunity for the city to have access to a maintained trail, which really minimizes the, the impact over the long term for um, city maintenance of that trail. It also uh, minimizes the construction cost of this project and allows um, something to be built within the funds that are available to the city now. Um, it, it just becomes a less expensive option to, to build this, this trail and trailhead. So where are we? What are, we, what are our next steps? Um, we've done one community meeting and had several opportunities to speak with the public at um, the Blue Mountain Trail annual hike. I've um, hiked that in 2019, uh, 2020, and we were fortunate again to do it in 2021. And at each of those events, we've spoken with the public there. We did have our uh, initial stakeholder meeting here at the City Hall back in um, 2019, but we would still want to uh, obtain additional input from stakeholders with this uh, third option or option C. Once we do that at a future meeting, we would then finalize our conceptual designs and cost estimates. We would take into consideration um, input from stakeholders at that second community meeting and fold that into our designs. Um, we would also present these final concepts and estimates to city council um, and share with city council the uh, outcome of our community meetings and where the design lands from those. If city council adopts the concept or uh, approves that concept, then we would move into construction documents. Construction documents are um, construction drawings and specifications that uh, are uh, advertised for public bid that allow contractors to price and bid the project. Um, once those uh, construction documents are prepared, it goes into a permitting or plan check phase. So jurisdictional agencies review the drawings, make sure that um, things are to code, ADA access is provided, uh, the stormwater retention and collection is there. So there's a there's state uh, California building code that, that um, we adhere to, and so we go through that process of receiving permits. Once that's done, ultimately it goes out to bid. Uh, the bid process, the projects uh, are out to bid for a couple of months, uh, bids come in, bids are accepted, um, and then the trail is constructed. So uh, we would be talking about this uh, project at uh, additional community meetings. Um, we have uh, plenty of opportunity for public input, but this is a catch up as to where we are today, and we thank you for your time. The total budget for the Blue Mountain Nature Trail and Trailhead consists of the following resources. State of California Habitat Conservation Fund, with an amount of $212,000 and an expiration on June 30th, 2023. Development impact fees with an amount of $212,000 and no expiration. Natural Resources Agency with an amount of $1,300,000 and an expiration on March 30th, 2022. For a total amount of $1,724,000 for total available resources. Thank you for watching this update on the Blue Mountain Nature Trail and Trailhead. Please forward all questions and comments to the City Clerk's Office of the City of Grand Terrace. C-O-G-T at grandterrace-ca.gov.